In this tutorial, we're going to add the step motor functionality to our pizza example and we'll update the HMI so that we can indicate to the user that the step motor has finished. Just a quick uh, overview of what we did before. In CX Programmer, we have three lines of ladder, or three rungs on our ladder, and the first rung sets the value for pi as 3.14 and we're using the p first underscore cycle to do that. We then had a HMI button, which is a virtual button using our work bit, in order to multiply the radius of the pizza by the radius to get the radius squared. Once we have the radius squared, we multiply that by the height to get the first value for volume. And once we had the value for volume, we needed to multiply that by pi to update the value for volume to get our final value. In this tutorial, we're going to take this volume that we calculated and we're going to convert that into steps. We were told in the spec sheet in the first video that 200 steps or one rotation was equal to one centimeter cubed. So let's have a quick look at what we set up in the CX Designer in the last tutorial. Within the CX Designer, we could set the radius and we could set the height and we had our output here, which was the volume. And we had the single go push button here, which we saw as a work bit in the PLC software that calculated or that we used to calculate the volume. Now we're adding the functionality for the stepper motor. When you press this go button, it'll first of all calculate the volume and then run the stepper motor. When the stepper motor is running, we're going to add a screen to indicate the stepper motor is running. And then when the stepper motor has finished, we will reset the screen back to the first screen. So the first thing we need to check is within systems and system settings, we need to check that we have the right initial settings. So the system memory, we have two addresses here and they both need to be set to DN200 or the data memory 200. So this will be set in my PLC. We'll call that variable switch screen and whatever that integer is set to will be the screen displayed on the PLC. The screen numbers are going to be 0 and 1. So let's add a new screen. So let's add a new screen. We'll call that screen 1 and let's call it stepper. So my screen is black. Let's just change that to white. And I'll add a label. We'll call that stepper running. This is just to indicate that the stepper is running and the dough is being set fed from the system. So with that done, our HMI is now updated. So let's go and update our PLC code. In CX Programmer, I've updated these values here and changed the variables to 100, 103, 105, 107, and 109. They were originally 0, 3, 5, 7, and 9 in the previous video. This is just to allow us to easily copy in the example that we've done for the stepper motor that's up on Brightspace. So I'm going to open the example on Brightspace and just copy that code in. So this is the code available on Brightspace. It has the first cycle as well. And this time I set up the acceleration, the deceleration, the target frequency, the start frequency, the origin, and the INI function needs to be run to configure the high speed output. There will be a separate video on setting up the high-speed outputs, which will go into it in a lot more detail. For now, we're just configuring this as per the pre-existing example. I'm going to copy this rung and paste it into my pizza example. So in the pizza example, that rung has been copied in, and, I'll move, and I've moved the pi in as well, so that they're all being configured in the one rung, just to neaten it up a little bit. With that done, I need to copy in the run from the example to run the step motor. There is a limitation when using the high speed outputs in simulator. They don't actually run. So what I've done to make this work because you're working from a simulation at home is I've created this work bit called start step motor. And the first function you won't have seen before is FIX, which converts a floating point into a 16 bit number or a true number. So 10.343 will just become 10. And the second line is the pulse. We're using port 0. These are the configuration values. This is the acceleration, which is the first word. And this is the start frequency. And then restarting this step to say that it's running. So that's reset. I'm moving the value 1 into the integer select screen, which is set to D, which is what we set up in CX Designer. The next one down starts a timer when start stepper motor is high. And it runs for 100 by 100 or 10 seconds. And in the video on work, working with high speed outputs, I'll go into more detail about how this will be done on a live system. But because we don't have access to the lab at the moment, we're just going to use this as just a simulation. 
So let me copy these three lines and put them into my pizza code. These lines have been copied into CX Programmer and we have the first rung configuring all the values, the second rung works out the volume, the third rung starts the timer, the fourth rung here starts the stepper motor and the last rung when timer is complete will stop the motor. So we've copied in the last three lines, just need to make one last update. Where we have start stepper motor, we need to set that high as we work out the value. So let's add in a set. Start, step. So that will start the timer once the HMI button is pressed. And I need to update the symbols now within CX Designer. So I'll go into CX Programmer, select my three variables, radius, height, and volume. And that's 100, 103, and 107. They were originally 0, 3, and 7. And I will go into the symbol library within CX Designer and update them there. So Control V within CX Designer to update those values. Now they're equal to 100, 103, and 107. So let's simulate this and see what happens. To do that, I go Tools, Test, and Yes, and Connect to CX Simulator. Put the simulation up and running. I'm going to select a height of a radius of 10 and a height of 2. So press Go, and the screen changes briefly, and it tells me just step on all the way from it. I'll need to change that and maybe change the time a little bit to make it look a bit more realistic, but we can do that later on. That's all for this short tutorial. The code is available on Brightspace, so you can download it from there. Thanks for watching.